guys welcome to or welcome back to my channel as you can tell from the title of today's video we are doing an updated what's on my iPhone with the new iOS 16 customizations if you haven't heard about iOS 16 it was a big new update that Apple released about one or two months ago kind of on the same level as the big iOS 14 update that they did back in 2020 there are so many new ways to customize your iPhone and it was very exciting like playing around with it so I can't wait to show you what I did with my phone and still to this day whenever I do what's on my iPhone videos I still get some comments asking how I got the app icons and widgets and I'm not going to be explaining that in this video I'm gonna be focusing on iOS 16 so if you're still interested in how iOS 14 works I will have that tutorial video linked down below and now watch this tutorial slash what's on my iPhone video to learn how to use iOS 16 and I'm also gonna be sharing all of my favorite apps for daily life for editing my Instagram pictures all the fun stuff. So I hope that you enjoy this video and let's just get into it. So starting with my lock screen, this is the lock screen that I customized with iOS 16 and I will be showing you how to do the exact same thing on your phone. My background is a disposable picture of myself in Paris last summer when I took a trip here. I did a whole vlog about it and you know I've had this picture as my background for over a year now and I moved to Paris four months ago so maybe I manifested that a bit and then I have my customization. So I have the date on the top obviously and then I put put a little weather widget so this one just shows that I'm in Paris and it shows the weather but it doesn't show like the temperature or anything there's just a little symbol which I thought was kind of cute then I have the time and you can actually change the font of the time with iOS 16 and then I have two more widgets so I have the battery percentage widget I always want to know what my battery is and then I have my alarms I don't have any alarms right now but if I go turn one on it'll tell me that I have an alarm set and so that is very helpful during the week when I need to set an alarm to get up for work. When I'm going to bed at night, you know, sometimes I'm like, did I set an alarm? And all I have to do is tap on my home screen and see that I set an alarm. I don't have to like unlock it, go to the clock app and like check my alarms. So that's kind of how I designed my home screen and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do the same thing. So what you're going to do to get to the customization panel is tap on your home screen and press your finger down and hold it there. And you flip over and you have a new home screen to customize. So we'll do it together. So I'm just going to click on the plus sign and and then it shows you pictures. You can choose one of their like wallpapers that they have, or you can go into your photos and choose a photo. You can adjust the photo by like pinching it. I wanna see, yeah, look. So some photos, you can actually put the subject of your photo over the clock. So I think that's kind of cool. I kind of wanna do that for this one. And then as you can see, you can put some filters. I'm just gonna leave it how it is. So then I'm gonna go into the clock and then these are all the fonts that you have to choose from. I'm gonna make this one completely different from my other one. So I'm gonna choose mm, this clock. And then you can also choose the color. Oh, and then here you can choose whatever color you want. So maybe, should I make it blue? I kind of like that. No, do I? Maybe just a little darker so you can see it better. There, I like that blue. Then up here, we can start choosing the widgets. So this weather app widget is the one that I have where it just shows your city and then a little icon of the weather. You can also, as you can see, choose some calendar ones. This is my parents' dinner for tonight because I'm connected to the family calendar and they put their dinner every single day. You can also put the alarm widget here as well. You can put Facebook birthdays, um, reminders. I don't use that. Oh, and there's actually so many options for the weather network. And then down here in Widgetsmith, you can actually create your own text widget. So it can say a quote. It can say, you know, like, have a good day. I haven't made any text widgets, but Widgetsmith is the exact same app that I used to make all my widgets in iOS 14. So definitely recommend that app for any customization purpose on your phone. I'm going to put the alarm on here. I'm going to switch it up a bit and then we're going to go into the main widget section. So again, you have so many options. You can actually add the Snapchat camera and then before you even unlock your phone, you can just tap on that and it'll go straight to Snapchat. I think I'm going to just put the weather one here and then I'm also going to put the Snapchat camera and there we go. And then you can also add the depth effect which will give your apps on your like home screen some shadow underneath them which I think looks kind of cool. And then I'm going to click add 
iPad and then you can have your home screen be the exact same picture as your lock screen but I'm actually going to customize the home screen I'm going to choose another photo let's choose this sunset photo view out of my apartment so I'm going to click done there we go now I can unlock my phone and it looks awful because <laughs> this is not how I have my phone customized but that's just kind of to show you how it works and now I'm going to return to my actual home screen to show you what's on my iPhone so this is my lock screen which you already saw and then going into my home screen this is my first home screen page my background is another disposable picture from my trip to Paris last summer this is of the Seine I was just walking along a bridge and then this boat passed by and I took a picture of it with my phone and I thought it was so pretty so I quickly snapped a disposable picture as well and I love this picture so much and then as you can see I also have a widget smith picture of me and my two best friends Michaela and Jordan at my 21st birthday party last year and then flipping over to the second page I have more apps with more app icons and another widget smith picture this is of me and my three camp friends and then moving on my last page is just of some more widget smith pictures because I had fun kind of customizing my phone with pictures so at the top I have a quote that I really like from Harry Potter and then I have two pictures of my dog Cooper the love of my life he deserves the spotlight so those are my three pages once again if you want to learn how to do the widget smith photos or do the app icons I have all of that explained in my iOS 14 tutorial but for now I'm just going to get into all the apps that I use for social media for just my daily life for editing Instagram pictures I'm gonna give you all of my favorite apps that I think you should download on your phone as well but before I give away my secrets I need to put a case on my phone I took off my case to you know start this video show you what my phone looks like it's a beautiful silver iPhone 13 Pro Max but I need to have a case on it I do not trust myself to use it without a case so I'm going to put back a case on my phone and my favorite cases are cased by cases you guys know this I cannot live without my cased by cases my cased by phone straps I had limited space in my suitcase when I moved to Paris and my cased by cases made the cut and cased by is actually sponsoring this video so thank you so much cased by I literally love you guys I have this huge cased by box to unbox with you guys let's open her up look whoops look at this beautiful thing I got so many cases and accessories that I'm gonna show you so the first case that I got is this clear case with a bunch of white and yellow daisies I think that's a flower this one is so cute I will definitely be wearing this case I literally switch my case by cases once a week because I have so many of them and I love them all so I want to wear them all so maybe I'll wear this one for this upcoming week it's so cute then I have this custom case as you can see it's just a clear case and then it says Zoe at the bottom in white cursive it is so cute little confession I got this package right before my birthday week so I wore the Zoe case my entire birthday week because you know it kind of fit the vibe of my birthday to have a case with my name on it then I got this other clear one this is a flower case it is so pretty I've had my eye on this one for so long I just spotted an airplane if you saw my eyes go up there and then I got this case this is another clear case I really love clear cases because then you can see like the white iPhone in the background and this one is another flower case but this one has orange yellow bright pink and light pink flowers and then for accessories I got another phone strap if you guys watched my weekend vlog in Paris I talked about the case five phone straps because these have been my lifeline ever since I moved to Paris because they protect my phone so well from pickpocketing so I'm so excited to have another phone strap this one is in like a corally peachy pink it's super super pretty I also got a case to lens protector which is so cool you can just stick this right over your camera lenses and it will protect them from any scratches or cracking then I got a tempered glass screen protector case by screen protectors are literally the strongest screen protectors you can find for your phone then I got one of their beaded phone straps so this is not a phone strap that you tie around your wrist like the pink one but this is more of an accessory that you just add to your phone to make it super cute this is what it looks like they have so many beads so colorful and they actually put my name right here I'm a sucker for anything that's customized with my name on it so thank you so much case by everything in this package is so cool I literally love case by so much I wear their cases and phone straps on a daily basis so I'm going to do a little close-up of the cases that I just got while I talk to you about their new iPhone 14 impact series and if any of these cases catch your eye while I try them on you can go to casedify.com slash Zoe Maya to get 15% off your order so casedify actually has a new impact series for the iPhone 14 with new protection technology called EcoShock which guarantees over 20% increased protection for your phone the new 
new EcoShock technology means up to 11.5 feet drop protection, five times the military standard, meaning that it's been drop tested 130 times to ensure the EcoShock doesn't wear off, and the cases still provide optimal protection while maintaining the slim and sleek look of a cute case to buy case that fits in your hands and pockets. However, if you are not upgrading your phone, case to buys iPhone 13 or earlier cases are also perfect for protection and style as they are up to 9.8 feet drop proof as I show with a little drop test here. They are three times the military standard and they come in more than 300,000 prints. I have so many case to buy cases because I truly love them and my favorite part about case to buy is their huge range of prints created by artists or their customizable options so that I can create my own custom case. Case to buys iPhone 14 cases are also made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials and they're partially made from upcycled phone cases as part of their Recasetify program. Whether you're upgrading your iPhone or not, head to casetobuy.com for their latest iPhone 14 impact case series as well as their cases for iPhone 13 or earlier and go to casetobuy.com slash Maya to get 15% off your order. So now that I have my new case by case on, let's get into what's on my iPhone. So obviously starting with my very first homepage and my very first app, I have Safari. I feel like that's just kind of general like main app that I would use for, you know, Googling anything, going to any website. It's like the powerhouse of my phone. And then on my other page, I have settings, both of them in the same spot because I feel like both of them have that purpose. So I have Safari, then I have photos. I have quite a few photos. I have 63,788 photos, 3,439 videos. My phone has 512 gigabytes of storage and I have maxed it out multiple times in the last few months ever since I moved to Paris. The thing is, is now I take so many more videos, mainly for TikToks. I take videos now on my phone, which I didn't used to because I used to only vlog videos and I record in 4K, which I know is like I shouldn't because it takes up so much storage, but I'm a video editor, like making videos is what I do for a living. So I'm going to have the best quality videos. So I record in 4K. Right now I'm at like probably 503 gigabytes of storage. I'm hoping that my screen recordings like don't max out my storage and I can finish this video. Moving on, we have YouTube. Obviously I have the YouTube app. I mainly watch YouTube on my computer, but I obviously have the app here with all of my subscriptions and then my channel. If you're not ready, you should definitely subscribe. And then I have calendar, which I'm not gonna go to because it's my parents' calendar. It's not my own calendar. I'm synced to like the family calendar. So that's why when I was doing like the home screen stuff, I could see what they're having for dinner because they put what they're having for dinner on there. And then they also put like all their errands, appointments, when my mom works. So I know that if I'm calling her, like usually I will check the calendar before I call her to make sure she's not at work. And then I have Snapchat. Hello, I've had Snapchat for so long and I still use it to, you know, Snapchat a few of my friends. Then I have Gmail, um, which I'm not gonna go into because I don't want you to read all of my emails, but I have, yeah, Gmail for my YouTube Gmail, my personal Gmail and my work Gmail. Then I have YouTube Studio, also not gonna go on that because it shows all of my YouTube analytics. You can also reply to comments through the YouTube Studio and I reply to every single one of my YouTube comments. So if you wanna leave me a comment down below, I will reply to you, I get a little notification from YouTube YouTube studio. Then next I have a Harry Potter game. Then next I have Twitter. I don't really go on Twitter that much, like at all. Then next I have TikTok. There's my friend Sage. But yeah, obviously I love TikTok. I use it all the time. This is my TikTok, Zoza McCormack again. My goal is to post once a day on TikTok. So a lot of content on there. You should definitely follow me. I post about my life. I post about Paris. I post like funny trend things. Then I have Facebook. Don't really use Facebook. Then I have Messenger. Don't really use Messenger. But I just like have not changed my apps since I made all of this like customization stuff because it took so long to do. So I did make a list of apps that I still want to share with you that are not here that I usually like pull down and search for like Be Real, like this really cool editing app that I have. So I'm going to do that at the end. And then moving down to the bottom row, I have Instagram. This is like my most used app probably. This is my Instagram account. I'm also very active on stories. So you should definitely follow me on Instagram. I probably post on my stories the most often and then TikTok and then YouTube because you know stories are the easiest. TikTok is the second easiest type of content to make and then YouTube is the hardest because it takes so long to film and so long to edit but YouTube will always be my favorite. And yeah, I have a bunch of stories that you guys can watch in my highlights if you haven't seen them. This is my Paris 
fall story and then I have my Paris summer story and then a bunch of other stories like university, books, YouTube, travel, food, family. My next app on the bottom is the camera app. I just have this easily like available so that I can click it whenever I'm taking photos, videos, which I do a lot. And then next to that is the phone app. And then next to that is my messages. Moving on to my second page, I have settings, which I told you I have there because I feel like it's it deserves the top spot because settings is useful for everything. Then I have music. I am not a big music person. What I usually do is go into artists, scroll down to Taylor Swift and just put her on shuffle. I just don't listen to music that much. I need like silence when I'm working on something to concentrate. I need absolute silence. If I'm not working, you know, I'm reading, which I don't want music for, or I'm like watching YouTube videos or editing YouTube videos. I can't have music on for that either. The only time I usually put on music is when I'm cooking or cleaning my apartment to, you know, make it fun. Then I have notes, which I'm not going to go into because I have like so many different types of notes. But yeah, I literally use notes every day, all the time. Like anything that I need to write down, I put it in my notes. I make lists. I make checklists. I write down ideas that come to my head, like video title idea, like anything, everything. Then I have clock, which is for alarms. And as you can see, I have so many alarms. It is very difficult for me to wake myself up in the morning. I usually have like about 30 to 45 minutes of alarms before I get out of bed. Then I have Outlook, which is the email app that I used for university, which I graduated from in April. I will probably get around to changing like all the apps that are on my home pages at some point. That day is not today though. Next to that, I have my Canadian bank account, which I still have, but the one that I use on a daily basis is obviously my France bank account. Then I have Slack, which is what my work uses to communicate. I also used it back in university to communicate on the magazine team that I was on. Then I have TubeBuddy, which is another kind of like YouTube analytics app. There's this milestones tab where you can see your subscriber view and upload milestones, which you don't get in the YouTube Studio app. Now we're starting to get into some of the apps that I use to edit my pictures. So the first one here is called Tezza. Tezza is definitely the editing app that I use the most. I love their filters. I use these filters for my Instagram pictures, for my Instagram stories. The first one here is called Fresh. I really like this one when I want something to be like very white. Like if I have a picture with a white background, I will usually use Fresh because it makes it look very vibrant, but also very white and it just looks really nice. I mean, this is a picture of myself, so it's not the best example. I also love vintage. As you can see, it makes your skin very tan. So I will obviously turn it down, but you know, vintage is very nice to give you that like sun-kissed tan skin. And then I also love cocoa. This one makes like the whole image darker. I like using this sometimes on my stories because I feel like that darker aesthetic is very in right now. So I sometimes use cocoa to get that effect. And then lush, which I do use mainly on pictures that I want to be lush. Like if they have a lot of greenery, lush looks very nice. So fresh, vintage, cocoa, and lush, I would say, are my top four filters on Tezza. And Tezza is my number one editing app. Moving on, we have Visco. I used to use Visco all the time, but I really have not used it in a while. Those pictures at the bottom are from last summer. These pictures are from last fall. And then these pictures are from the spring. Then I have the app over. I use this app to create my Instagram story, like promo things, as you can see here. I put these on my Instagram story when I have a new video coming out but then I also use this app as you can see to make my thumbnails because I can put a bunch of pictures I can like erase the background and then I will go into my iPad on procreate to do the handwritten text but I always start with over to kind of like make the collage as you can see I can take this photo and then I go to mask and I select this tool and I can like erase the background and that's how I usually make my thumbnails that involve multiple pictures then I have Pinterest Pinterest. I really just use Pinterest as like a search tool when I want aesthetic looking pictures. You know, I wish I could be that girl who goes onto Pinterest and has like amazing boards, has her entire life planned out. That's not me though. So that is it for my home pages. I have this last home page with the widgets as I showed you before, but those are my three home pages. And now I'm gonna show you the apps that I don't have on my home pages, but that are still very fun apps that I would recommend. I have Be Real, of course. I love Be Real. It's so fun. I have all my friends on there. I have like seven 
seven months of memories on my account. I try to be on time like every day. It's just so much fun. Everyone who has Be Real knows how fun it is. The next app I want to show you is the Dazcam app. This app is so cool. It has a bunch of cameras for photos or videos that you can use to put like a Polaroid disposable film effect on your photos. And I actually bought like a yearly subscription to this thing. I think it was like $7 for a yearly subscription because this camera, the D Fun S camera, it's my favorite and it was locked. You can get a few of the cameras for free, but this one was locked and I really wanted to use it for my 22nd birthday photos to get that like fun film effect on them. The next app that I use a lot that is not on my homepage is Goodreads. If you want to follow me on Goodreads, obviously my username is Zoza McCormack, like everything, but I have really gotten into reading in the last two years and I made a Goodreads to store like all of the books that I've read and my ratings for all of them so you can rate books out of five stars. I put like my list of books that I want to read. I have my favorites shelf right here. These are all my favorite books. Um, these are my other bookshelves here. I have my red shelf. So I have read 118 books, not in the last two years. Like I put books that I read before making my Goodreads account. My to read shelf are all the books that I want to read. And in my bio, I have like how I rate things, like what five stars means to me, what four stars means to me, etc. Goodreads is just so much fun. I have my friends on it. You can follow me on Goodreads. Now that I'm done going through that list, that is officially everything that is on my iPhone 13 Pro Max with 512 gigabytes that I'm almost out of. I hope that you enjoyed seeing what is on my iPhone. I hope that maybe you got some recommendations for apps that you want to add to your phone. I hope that you also enjoyed my tutorial of how to customize your phone with iOS 16. And I hope that you enjoyed my little Case to Buy haul. Don't forget to go to casetobuy.com slash Maya for 15% off your order. And that is going to be it for my updated what's on my iPhone video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below because I respond to every single comment. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I will have all my other iPhone videos linked down below if you're interested in watching them. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!